Hey guys, Matt here. Welcome to Learn to Discern. We have someone new for you today as we are going to be assessing some of the teachings of Isaac Petrie. As always, we are simply going to listen to what he is teaching and we are going to compare it to the Word of God. But first, if you'd like to help promote Christian content here on YouTube, please go ahead and take a second now to subscribe to my channel and thank you in advance. Okay guys, here we go. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. Yes. He says, I've given you my authority. Deal with it. No. Okay, guys. So this claim from Isaac is that Jesus has given us his authority. And look, we just want to be biblical on all things. So I, it's not my intention to mock people or make fun of them. But we do have to ask the question, has Jesus given us his authority? authority. And if you believe Isaac's teaching that he has, then I would ask you to please point me to a passage of scripture that tells us that we have been given Jesus's authority. Now, again, I, I don't do this to, to brag or to, to make fun of you or anything, but I think if you were to take that challenge seriously, that you would not be able to come up with a passage of scripture. In fact, the one that people will try to point to uh, oftentimes is the Great Commission, Matthew 28. But I, I want you to note here that yes, Jesus will say that he has all power and authority, but there is no mention of him giving it to anybody else. So here it is, Matthew 28. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Yes. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Jesus says, I have all authority Therefore, go and do these things because I'm going to be with you always and I'm the one who has all authority and I am with you. This is not a transfer of authority. There is no statement that Jesus says, I am giving it to you. And friends, I just want you to think about it logically. Um, if indeed we have all of Jesus's power and authority, I mean, Jesus walked on water. Jesus did all these great miracles. I mean, he can raise people from the dead. If we have that authority, then we would be able to do it automatically. We could raise any person from the dead. We can heal any person without question. We could make all people get saved automatically. Well, we don't see that. And if you're being honest with yourself, and listen, I'm not a person who doesn't believe that God does miracles today. I certainly do believe that God does miracles today. But if we had that authority, we, we would be seeing it left and right all the time. And that certainly is not our experience. So that might sound good to people. It might make you feel good to think I have this authority and I can go and do things. But this is simply not a biblical teaching. All right, let's continue. Which means Satan is praying that you never get this revelation in you because if you do and it becomes real to you his days of functioning in your life are so if you get this revelation satan will have no more impact in your life whatsoever okay does this line up with scripture? First Peter chapter five, starting in verse eight. Be sober minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Dominion. That's like power and control to him be it <laughs> forever and ever. But we see that scripture calls us to be sober minded and to be watchful. Why? Because the devil is prowling around. He, he's looking for someone to devour. That means I have to be on the watch. And what does it say? Now, now that you know that the devil is going around, you need to get this revelation that you actually have all of Jesus's authority so that he has no more control in your life. No, the call is resist him. 
firm in your faith. And then it even talks about that you would have these sufferings that would be potentially caused by him. And it says you might suffer for a little while, but then the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. So this devil problem is not something that you take care of by yourself in an ultimate sense. Now you can do what verse 9 says and you can resist him. And we're going to go over some other ways that the Bible talks about spiritual warfare in a little bit. But ultimately, what is going to give us a victory over Satan. It's Christ himself will do all of these things for you. So once again, uh, we don't see that this is the case. Now, Isaac is also teaching that um, we have authority over Satan. And once we get this revelation, then, you know, we can operate in it. So I want to point you to the book of Jude, and you'll see this section here that um, is titled Judgment on False Teachers. So this is going to tell us Uh, some of the things that false teachers do. So let's go down to verse 8, and let's see one of the characteristics of false teachers. Yet in like manner, these people also, relying on their dreams, defile the flesh, reject authority, and blaspheme the glorious ones. That's speaking of angels, not only good angels, but fallen angels, devils, demons, right? Okay. But when the archangel Michael, contending with the devil, was disputing about the body of Moses, he did not presume to pronounce a blasphemous judgment, but said, the Lord rebuke you. But these people blaspheme all that they do not understand, and they are destroyed by all that they, like unreasoning animals, understand instinctively. Okay, so the point is, the archangel Michael, when he was contending with Satan, he didn't make an appeal to authority and say, I am above you. No, he rather appealed to God. He said, the Lord rebuke you. And it said it would have been a blasphemous judgment for him to speak in that sort of way to Satan, because obviously Satan is evil and we don't look up to him in that way. But angels are a different created class than us, right? They're just different and they are worthy of respect just by by virtue of the fact that they are angelic. We need to treat them with a certain amount of reverence in that sense. I hope that makes uh, sense to you. And it says, but these false teachers in verse 10, They blaspheme all that they do not understand. So they are trying to take authority over the devil. You ever heard somebody say, you know, I'm binding Satan. I take authority over you, Satan. This is literally mentioned in scripture as something that false teachers do. So that's a big problem. So Isaac has already started down that path. I may have gotten a little ahead of myself with that scripture, but you're going to see that's absolutely where he's going here in a second. Over, over, over. I'm telling you after the day some of you have been saying my God I've been under attack and under attack and under attack and under attack and under attack oh but it's going to change that's what principalities are going to start saying about you I've just been under attack under attack under attack under attack under attack under attack every time they get up they start binding me every time they get up they start casting me out I can't do nothing in that house I can't do nothing in their life. Yep. See, I told you there. And and he said there that basically your days of troubles are about to be over. Now, I would just point you to Jesus's words in John 16, verse 33. I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. That's trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. I mean, this idea, I understand it sounds good to people, right? The idea that you would have authority, that that is appealing to people. And then, oh, I'm not going to have any more trouble. Satan's not going to attack me anymore, right? That that sounds really good to people, but that actually goes against Jesus's words. It goes against what we've already looked at in scripture, where it says Satan's looking for somebody to devour. You have to resist him. And maybe this is even a decent point to talk about the fact that um, you see here in the title, it, it, it mentions uh, Ephesians 6, 12, which is one of the, the major verses that people will use in spiritual warfare. So let's just go ahead and read Ephesians 6, because I want you to see something about spiritual warfare. When it starts talking about our battle against the devil, it doesn't say take your authority over him and uh, just cast him out or anything. Listen to what it actually says, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So obviously that's talking about demonic entities. 
Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. So what is spiritual warfare? It's putting on the armor of God. We have to put on the different pieces of armor. It's not taking authority and just saying, I bind you and I'm exercising my authority over you. See, this is not how scripture talks about spiritual warfare. So again, I would appreciate somebody's heart who understands that uh, demonic attacks are a very real thing. The Satan is real. Demons are real. Um, and they are trying to exert some sort of influence even over the lives of believers. But if you have a desire to fight spiritual warfare, what you need to understand is that Isaac Petrie is not giving you a biblical formula for how to do that. He is making up these teachings that make you sound that, that may sound good to you and make you feel very powerful, but they're actually mentioned in scripture as things that false teachers would do, and they're actually not equipping you and helping prepare you for that battle. So this is something that should be very alarming to you. Come on, shout, there's victory in the house of God. We've got authority here. <laughs> Sounds like a Vuvuzela, man. That's hilarious. You have the authority you have been given it so that you can rule over principalities and powers. And again, he has no verse for any of this. In fact, it's very unbiblical. Today is the day you become the master over principalities and powers. Can you turn my mic up just a little bit? I'm going to holler all morning. Which means what God did with you the Bible says he did it to prove to principalities and powers the manifold wisdom of God. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and look at this passage of scripture that he's referring to. This is in Ephesians chapter 3. Now, remember, contextually, when he says what God did with you, he's talking about giving. He would be saying God gave you his authority, right? Okay, so is this what Ephesians 3 is talking about? Well, we go up to the top. And we see it's the mystery of the gospel revealed is the heading. So let's start in verse 7. Of this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given me by the working of his power. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. So already notice we're talking about the gospel. And now in verse 8, Paul is talking about preaching to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Christ. So he's talking about Christ, him crucified, the gospel again, and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God, who created all things, so that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. Friends, this is about the gospel message. And in particular, you will see that um, this mystery of the gospel that is being talked about in verse 6 this mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. That is what is being talked about. So when it says through the church the manifold wisdom of God might be made known, it is in the fact that he is saving Jews and Gentiles through the gospel. This does not have to do, again, with authority being given to believers that are now somehow over the demons. This is just not the case. Satan wants to be a God. He wanted to be a God when he wanted to ascend to the heaven. Then Adam sinned, he wanted to become the God of this world. He wants to rule. God sent Jesus into the earth, resurrected his spirit, sat him in a spiritual dimension of all authority, and then pulled all of us up here with him and gave us the same authority to show to Satan, you ain't no principality. Okay. So he rightly points out that Satan wanted to be God, wanted to be like God, yes. Okay, Adam wanted to be like God, yes. That, that's very sinful, and that's actually something, a desire that is still in many human hearts. But I, I don't think he's recognizing that 
at least some of what he is teaching could be pulling at that same desire in people because he's saying you have the same authority of as God. I mean, you don't see how that would be pulling on people's desires to be like, God, sweet. I can have the authority of God. Wow. I can be just like God. I have his authority. I mean, it's very ironic that he's, he's teaching this. Now, I, I don't think he means it quite in the same way that, um, maybe Satan and, and Adam wanted to be like God, but still there's such great irony in that, that you're calling them out for that, but you're teaching people that they have the same authority of God. So in that sense, they can be like God. I mean, that's a problem. If you want a principality, I'm about to show you one. Point to yourself. Say, I'm a greater principality. Which means you'll never start dealing with principalities until you understand you are one. Guys, this is, a, this is a big problem. Because what this is going to do is breed arrogance and pride. In the body of Christ, and again, listen to me, because I can just imagine the. I, I get the comments all the time. It, it's amazing um, how many times I will literally in my video say I believe this, and a person will in the comments say you don't believe the very thing that I said I believed. Uh, so <laughs> I can just imagine somebody commenting to me and saying, "Well, you know, you don't believe uh, in in God's power. You don't believe in miracles. You don't believe in things that." No, I, I very much do. I believe God does miracles today. I believe God is still working. He can do great signs and wonders and all, all of those things. I very much believe it. But we need to understand that God is sovereign and that anything that we would do, even if God were to work through us, if I were to pray for someone and they were to get healed, which that absolutely can happen and does happen, right? People pray for somebody and they get healed. We need to understand it didn't happen because I have authority in and of myself to heal that person. It would happen because God has all authority and I humbly asked him and he responded. That's what prayer is. Prayer is humbly asking God. And so this, I think, kind of usurps that role or that need in our life for us to approach God with humility, asking him for things. Because if we have all authority, and God has given it to us. I mean, what would be the point of prayer? I would have all the authority and I could do everything myself. We know that we need to pray. We know that we need to ask God for things. And the reason is because we don't have authority. So again, this might be uh, pulling on some sort of desire that people have within themselves for power, or maybe somebody does truly want to uh, fight spiritual warfare. And again, that would be good. But remember, true spiritual warfare is a battle for truth. It's a battle for truth, taking up the whole armor of God, the belt of truth, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God standing firm, resisting the devil, not trying to take authority over him and saying, you just can't cause any trouble in my life anymore. And I'm a principality and I'm greater than you. Okay. Don't do what the false teachers are doing. That is a big problem. So friends, uh, needless to say, Isaac Petrie, not somebody who is rightly handling God's word. And if he's not rightly handling God's word and pointing us to the truth of scripture, not somebody we should be following in the Christian faith. All right, guys, please make sure that you take a second now to subscribe to my channel. Also, please remember that I now have a profile on Ko-fi. So if you would like to partner together with me financially in ministry, you can do so by checking out the link that I will put down below in the description. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, God bless.